guys, welcome to Lingua Marina. Today, we're gonna learn some smart phrases in English that you can use in your conversation in order to make your speech more natural and to sound more like a native speaker. There are so many phrases that we use over and over again in our English language speech, and I do the same mistake. Sometimes I talk to people and I say the same phrase over and over and over again. This makes my speech boring. And uh, this is why I decided to make this video where we would go through different situations and we're gonna discuss smart phrases that native speakers use and that you can use to improve your spoken English. So if you're interested, continue watching this video up to the very end and do not forget to hit the like button if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. The first situation that we're gonna discuss is making plans with someone. Yes, you can say, oh, let's see each other tonight or let's do this tonight. Do you know what Americans say? They say, let's grab a coffee sometime. And the thing is, this coffee phrase doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna go to a coffee shop. When an American invites me to grab a coffee, we could also go to a sandwich place. We could go and walk in a park. This is just a phrase to invite someone to a casual meeting. You wanna grab a coffee or something? Another way you can say that, let's catch up for a coffee tonight or in a week or tomorrow or whatever. Maybe we could get a cup of coffee and catch up. Of course, every person would understand that the purpose of this meeting is not drinking coffee together. The purpose of this meeting is for you to connect, to chat, etc. There is a phrase that would highlight this chatting over drinking coffee. The phrase that you can use sounds like, let's catch up over a coffee sometime. So basically with this preposition over, you're putting coffee here, but you're putting catching up here. So it's kind of above. Maybe over a cup of coffee. And it's more meaningful for you to talk to this person and not just grab a coffee with them. If you don't want to make any particular plans, if you don't want to invite someone to a coffee shop or to a restaurant, you can just say, let's hang out tonight. Hang out means spend time together and it doesn't matter what you're gonna do. You can go to a park, you can go to a party, you can go to a movie theater. Oh, your boyfriend's out of town, let's hang out tonight. The whole purpose of this getting together is to connect with the person that you wanna spend time with. Or if you don't want to make any particular plans, but you want to inform the person that you really like him or her and you want to spend more time together, you can say, do you wanna hang out sometime? You wanna hang out sometime? Go out. And then uh, you can continue this phrase by suggesting where you would go. We could go to a movie theater, see this, this and that, or there's a new coffee shop that opened next to my place. Do you wanna meet there on Saturday at 5 p.m.? If that's okay with you is a phrase that you can use in order to confirm plans. If that's okay with you. In my videos, I talk a lot about cultural differences between Americans and other cultures, especially I'm coming from a Russian-speaking country where people are very direct. So if you're inviting somebody somewhere, they will say, no, I'm busy. And this doesn't mean they're impolite. It just means they don't want to waste their energy and time on different phrases to make it more vague, to make it more polite, etc. Of course, people are different, but this is what I noticed, this major difference between the two cultures. So if you want to sound more American, more European, you need to learn how to be less direct and more polite. So instead of just saying, no, I don't want to go with you, you can say, it's very kind of you, but I have other plans. It's very, very kind of you, but I, I can't. If you want to be super formal, if you're chatting to a teacher or whatever, you can say, I really appreciate your offer, but unfortunately, and then you explain why you can't accept it. I really appreciate the offer, but... Um... When you want to say that you really, really like the offer, but you just can't come, you can say, it is very tempting. And tempting means that you really want to try it or you really want to do it. But I have to study for my exam. But I'm on quarantine or whatever. Sounds tempting. Very tempting. If you need more time to make a decision, if the offer is really, really grand, like, do you want to go to Europe? for a couple of days where you're like, oh my God, I can't answer this right now. You can say, let me sleep on this, which means that you're gonna give the answer tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. You need more time to make a decision. Let me sleep on this. I don't know. Let me sleep on it. Oh, come on. The next race is not like super polite because when people say, I wanna pass on it, it's kind of, they're refusing it. 
You can use it, but just be careful with the context and be careful with your intonation. So somebody invites you to a party and you can say, I'm sorry, I think I'm gonna pass on it because I have some other plans. But just make sure you don't say like, I'm gonna pass on it, this is a boring party because this is gonna be offensive. So just make sure you watch your body language and you watch your intonation. I just wanna pass. Another idiom that you can use sounds like to take a rain check on something and it means that you are declining the offer now but you might take it up later so for example you get an interview request or you get a vacation offer or you get like a huge deal and you like it but you're not ready to take it right now you can say can i take a rain check on it this would mean that you're saying no but you're open to discussing it in the future. And can I take a rain check? There are also cases when you don't want to explain yourself. So you can just say, I'm sorry, I don't think I can make it. That's it, no explanation needed. But uh, unfortunately, I don't think I can make it. Now imagine you were the one inviting somebody to a party or offering someone to catch up for a coffee and you got this refusal, how do you respond to it? You don't say, eh, you're a bad person, I don't wanna hang out with you anymore. You don't do that. Uh, there are several smart phrases, again, that you can use in this situation as well. The phrase that you can use, never mind, it's fine. The purpose of all of it is to make that person feel better because they refuse, they kind of feel awkward, and uh, it's very important that you say, never mind, it's okay. I will study over this weekend as well, so. We'll just study together, you know, virtually. Never mind, it's fine. Or if your offer was inappropriate, like maybe you offered to go on a date and then you realize uh, this person is married or whatever, you can say, never mind, forget what I just said. <laughs> Literally, just forget as if it never happened. Heck, you know what? Never mind, forget it. But if you are in an informal situation and you're really, really sorry that the person can make it, like you invited your best friend to a birthday party and uh, your best friend says he has COVID, <laughs> whatever you can say. Oh no, it's a bummer. But you know, get well soon. Thank you so much for getting back to me. So the phrases, when you're sorry, when you're upset, that's a bummer. Oh man, that's a bummer. Now, leaving the conversation is also really important. When you're talking on a phone or if you're in the middle of a group chat, you can't just say, oh, I gotta go, bye. You know, you need to kind of introduce your intention to leave. And again, there are several phrases that you can use for this situation. Guys, I'm sorry, it's time for me to head out. I have uh, a couple more meetings today. It was great seeing you all today, see you tomorrow. So the phrase is, it is time for me to head out. It's time for you to head home. Or another one, I'd better be going. Um, I better be going. Then if you're leaving in the middle of a conversation and you want people to inform you uh, about what happened later, you can say, please guys, keep me posted about the progress of this and that problem. And uh, the thing is, keep me posted can be used in this situation when you're genuinely interested. And also when we first came to Silicon Valley, when we were pitching LinguaTrip to some investors, of course, when you are you know, approaching a lot of people, some people just don't want to invest in your company. So some of those investors told us, guys, you're doing a great thing, keep us posted. And because I didn't know the meaning of that phrase, I thought they were really actually interested in the company. They wanted to hear everything that's going to happen in the future. But then later, my American friend explained that this is just a polite phrase. When you feel that the meeting isn't going anywhere, when you feel that a person isn't really interested, when they say, keep me posted, that means this conversation is over. Of course, you can send some updates, but I'm not really interested. But again, you need to feel the situation. Sometimes people genuinely say, Say, you know keep me posted we need to solve this problem together but sometimes this is a way to end the conversation in a polite way and show someone that they're interested but they're actually not so read in between the lines this is you know all about psychology and the language keep me posted keep me posted and the last but not the least it was nice seeing you take care that's a great substitution to just saying goodbye or whatever it was nice seeing you take care it was nice seeing you. Thank you guys for watching this video up to the very end. Below you can find some links to my courses and workbooks that we've created together with my company LinguaTrip, uh, the company that I've just told you about. If you're not yet subscribed to this channel and you are learning English, hit the red subscribe button. And I will see you very soon in my next videos. I produce them weekly. It was nice seeing you. Take care.